The Nikon Z50 was announced in October of 2019. Now it's time for a refresh. Some say that the replacement will be called the Nikon Z30 and it will be capable of 8K video. Details coming up, but first I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear news and rumors. The Nikon Z50 was released in October of 2019, a pretty good year for cameras. It has a 20.9 megapixel APS-C sensor and it can shoot 4K video at 24, 25 and 30 frames per second UHD or up to 100 and 120 frames per second in 1080. The only negative thing when it comes to video is, well, it has that 30 minute record limit. So hopefully in the replacement, the successor to the Z50, that record limit will go away. And considering that Canon ditched it with the R10 and the R7, I think it's a pretty good chance. And as far as the stills capabilities of the Nikon Z50, it could shoot continuously at 11 frames per second, had a shutter of 1 4,000th and produced very good image quality. At $859, the Nikon Z50 was a very affordable camera. It produced good video capabilities and very good stills capabilities. Although the autofocus system was a little bit slow and sometimes would tend to drift. Nikon Rumor says that the successor to the Nikon Z50 is gonna be called the Nikon Z30, not the Z70. And it's gonna have a higher megapixel count. Not really surprising, but what Nikon Rumors is saying is that Nikon's gonna be moving away from 24 megapixel cameras. Although I think for a camera like this, 24 to 26 megapixels is really kind of the sweet spot. So what are we gonna get in terms of megapixels? Well, he didn't really offer anything, but there were some wild rumors that he did report on and let's get to those now. So the Nikon Z30 is supposed to be capable of between 36 and 46 megapixels. Yeah, on a sub $1,000 camera, I don't really buy this myself. I think it's more likely to produce somewhere between 24 and maybe 26 megapixels. Sure, it could go up and do something like 32.5 megapixels, like Canon did with the 90D and the M6 Mark II. But I really don't see that happening. I think that 36 to 46, that, that is generally the price range of cameras that are well north of $2,000, well north of $3,000, approaching $4,000. So I don't really see that. Nikon rumors did mention that there is a possibility it could have 8K video, but one of the wild rumors that they're talking about said it's definitely gonna have 8K UHD video. But again, um, you really need at least 39 megapixels on a standard APS-C censored camera. If they come out with a completely redesigned sensor like a Super, Super 35 sensor, they could do it at 33 megapixels, but not with the standard aspect ratio that you get on an APS-C or even a full frame or even a medium format camera. You need at least 39 megapixels to do UHD and 45 megapixels to do DCI. So where, what else are we supposed to be getting in this new camera, this Nikon Z30, the successor to the M, M50, the Z50, thinking Canon a little bit there. Aren't these numbers and names a little bit similar across R, S, V, Z? Anyhow, um, it's supposed to have a mechanical shutter and have IBIS. Now, I don't think that's completely crazy because what I want to do now is draw your attention to the recently announced Canon R10. This camera is $979, it's sub $1,000, and it's right in that same price range as the Nikon, well, which one should we call it? The Nikon Z30, the successor to the Nikon Z50. Look at the specifications of the Canon EOS R10. And I think that's gonna be a much more probable likelihood of what we're gonna see in the Z30 and not these wild rumors of 36 to 46 megapixels in 8K. What the R10 does is it give us, gives us 6K oversample 4K video. And I think that's far more likely. I think having a 24 to 26 megapixel sensor makes sense a single card slot. I think it's gonna produce very, very, very good uh, image quality on stills mode. And I probably would expect if it's gonna do a mechanical shutter, could do anywhere from 10 to 15 frames per second. The R10 can do, I think, right around 15 frames per second as the R7. And electronic, the R10 can do 23 frames per second. So electronic, I think it's very likely that the Nikon Z30 can do electronic and mechanical with a 15 slash 20 frames per second. No problems there at all. However, because it's gonna be a sub $1,000 camera or thereabouts, I don't think we're gonna see a huge buffer. I think you might be able to hold down the shutter button for maybe an entire second in electronic mode, maybe two at most. And that's what we see with a Canon EOS R10. So to sum things up here, I think Nikon Rumors is right on the nose here. I think that the, the successor to the Nikon Z50 is gonna be the Z30. And I think it's gonna be definitely north of 20.9 megapixels. 
I don't think it's going to do 8K video, and I don't think it's going to be anywhere from 36 to 46 um, <laughs> megapixels. It's just way too much. But as far as having IBIS, um, no. The R7 has IBIS, the R10 doesn't. But as far as having a mechanical shutter and electronic, yeah, I think that's definitely possible because we see that in the R10. And historically, Canon and Nikon have, have offered very, very similar cameras. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Nikon Z30 approaches that. So when are we supposed to be getting this new camera, this new Nikon Z30, a successor to the Z50? Well, as far as the specifications, we should know those pretty shortly because according to Nikon rumors, once again, we're supposed to be getting an announcement this month along with a Nikkor 400mm f4.5. Yep, Nikkor Z 400mm f4.5. So I'm, I'm liking 2022. It started off very, very slowly, but then we started to get a lot of noise in January, about February with the GH6 and OM Systems Olympus OM1. So we got the OM1, we got the GH6, and then things got a little bit quiet. And then, of course, in May, we got all this build up for its two new Canon cameras, the R7 and the R10. And now here we are in June. Things got really, really quiet for that first week. I had about five days off. And guess what? We're getting rumors of some more cameras. Some Leicas may be coming out this month and maybe a Nikon. I really do like the Z50. I think it was very capable in terms of the what it offered video and stills. And yes, the autofocus system was the one negative here. It was a little bit slow and it did drift. And we must be fair here when it comes to Sony and Canon. They were much better, much more accurate, certainly at this price point. So if they could have tweaked the autofocus here and pretty well, more or less, just give us very similar capabilities to the Canon EOS R10. I think Nikon's got a winner here. Not everybody wants an 8K camera that's $4,000 or $3,500 that does 4K at 120 frames per second. There's a lot of people out there that still think $1,000 is an awful lot of money for a camera and don't want to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars. So the Nikon Z30, I think, can be a very, very successful camera. And historically, the top 10 cameras sold worldwide have often been APS-C censored cameras. But if you want to stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors, then go ahead and subscribe. But please choose all notifications because it's by clicking on all notifications that as soon as I publish a video, you automatically get notified so you can stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors. So anything coming up to date or anything else coming out on the Nikon Z30 or whatever else it might be called in its specifications, we should be getting a lot of that very, very shortly. And of course, there's been noise of other cameras coming out recently as well. So Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and choose all notifications. That's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you again soon.